Greetings, everyone. Mystery Manual here, um, speaking out from the void of the uh, coronavirus quarantine. Um, I want to talk to you about your last month of school coming up, your last four weeks. Um, first, bravo for getting here. Um, and for those of you that have been on the ball and uh, and have been have been sticking in here, I just really want to send you um, personal congratulations. Um, it's not a normal time, of course. And congrats for adapting. Kudos to you. Um, so. I want to give some words by way of intro to our project, our senior project, um, over the next four weeks. Um, but in order to do that, I want to read you a poem. I want to read a poem together. It's going to be linked. It's going to be part of, um, included in the assignment directions there. Please read it on your own. Uh, but the poem is called um, A Daily Joy to Be Alive. And it goes, No matter how serene things may be in my life, how well things are going, my body and soul are two cliff peaks from which a dream of who I can be falls. And I must learn to fly again each day or die. Death draws respect and fear from the living. Death offers no false starts. It is not a referee with a pop gun at the startling of a hundred yard dash. I do not live to retrieve or multiply what my father lost or gained. I continually find myself in the ruins of new beginnings, uncoiling the rope of my life to descend ever deeper into unknown abysses, tying my heart into a knot round a tree or boulder to ensure I have something that will hold me that will not let me fall. My heart has many thorn-studded slits of flame springing from the red candle jars. My dreams flicker and twist on the altar of this earth, light wrestling with darkness, light radiating into darkness to widen my day blue. And all that is wax melts in the flame I can see treetops. Um, one, one question that I would ask you to consider and will be part of today's exercise, Monday, that is, is um, what, what is this person's identity, this, uh, the, the writer of this poem? Um, one of the most stunning lines of this poem is the very last one. Um, I can see treetops. It's one line, it stands solo, it's its own stanza. What does that mean? Why is it there? Um, <clears throat> because in, oh, what's this? The, uh, one, two, three, four, and the fourth stanza. We see this line, I continually find myself in ruins of new beginnings, uncoiling the rope of my life to descend ever deeper into unknown abysses, tying my heart into a knot around a tree or boulder to ensure I have something that will hold me that will not let me fall continually find myself in the ruins of new beginnings, uncoiling the rope of my life to descend ever deeper into unknown abysses. 
So, when you think of the abyss, um, this often refers to the to the great depths of an ocean, an abyss quite like that, in which it's easy to get lost, in which it's deep. The further you go down, the more heavy it is, and it's dark. Um, <clears throat> In my opinion, you could say that just like if you've, if you've ever seen a picture of the horizon and it's on the water and the water almost perfectly mirrors the sky, I think there's something to that. Um, <clears throat> so this person who uncoils the rope of their life to descend ever deeper into unknown abysses, the end of this poem has the capacity to see treetops, which means his ability to descend into the depths, the dark and weighty and heavy depths, are equaled by his ability to float, to fly, to be in the sky, to be above, to be free as it were. You know, this notion of this of this author descending deeper into the abysses is like this is another way of saying that um, he has experienced deeply, and he has maybe even sought out experiences in his own life and for himself. Sometimes it gets messy. Um, just the word abyss can be a dark term. Um, it can, but a person with that capacity to, or, to experience has at the same time the capacity or the capability to, um, to fly, you know, to, so, in the places where it can get as intensely dark, um, mirrors the places in his life where he can get also intensely free and light. <clears throat> Talking about this because um, your project is going to be about identity. In particular, as, as it relates to a particular story, a short story, it's actually a play. Um, well, it's not a short story. It's not long either. It's going to be about 120 pages. Um, but it is a play. That reading goes quickly. It's not a Shakespeare-type play. Um, the language is a little bit more like um, The Cathedral, which we read recently. So it's, um, most part, rather, rather straightforward. Um, that play that we're reading is uh, a streetcar named desire and um, <clears throat> and in your project is going to be essentially answering the question in that play um, to what extent are individuals and and you're going to be basing your analysis on the individuals in this play to what extent are individuals free to create their own identity? Um, <clears throat> and so that is going to be the question around which your entire project is going to revolve. Um, and you're, you're going to be creating a presentation at the end of that project. Um, like something on Prezi.com or some uh, some presentation platform that you might like better. Some people like Google Slides. Prezi.com is a little more dynamic. It can do more things. In any case, when we, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but for the first two weeks here, it's going to be your guy's responsibility to read this uh, book, this play. There's going to be a link to it. I'm going to, we'll begin that tomorrow. 
um, and I'll give you a little bit more explanation about what's going on there with that reading um, tomorrow. One thing I will tell you now is that as you begin reading A Streetcar Named Desire, you will have to take notes. Um, and <clears throat> those notes are going to be uh, vital to your project grade and they will also be um, <clears throat> the thing that sets your presentation up for success. By the time you get done reading this, uh, this play and making notes alongside it, you will have all your material in those notes, all of your observations. Um, those are the things that we're gonna, we're gonna need to draw from once, uh, once you start making that presentation. So at the end of each week, over the next two weeks, the main thing, primary thing, really the only thing you're going to be turning into me is those notes. Um, uh, and those notes are going to be asking for things that you notice, asking for things that you observe about identity, these characters' identity. Um, what uh, do they consider to be their identity? That is who they are. Then again, what do other people consider to be their identity? It's who they are. Sometimes those aren't the same things. Who I understand myself to be can oftentimes be different than what other people perceive you to be, right? So I'm a character, just like these characters in this play. You're going to be examining that dynamic about identity. Um, how people identify themselves. Um, and to what extent people are free to create their own identity. Um, are we unfree in that regard or not? Uh, uh, or do we have the kind of freedom to create who we are that like in that poem? Um, so I'm going to post again that poem today. I'm going to ask you some simple questions about it. I want you to answer that. And then tomorrow we are going to start the, uh, the senior project stuff um, um, more in depth, uh, uh, properly. So, um, I hope you guys are good. Um, I miss you all. I'm still looking forward to some kind of graduation where we see, where we all see one another in the same building, and um, and and we all uh, uh, get to hug and get to um, celebrate together. You know. Um, and even though I know some of you guys are disappointed that your regular se senior year has, uh, has gotten um, messed up like this, that experience, <laughs> um, everyone being in the same room building and, uh, and, and sending one another off after such a weird time, you will be the only seniors to ever have that experience. Um, uh, and that's going to make the celebration there maybe that much more rare and uh, um, so maybe I'm looking for a silver lining but in any case uh, um, I hope you guys are well we'll talk again soon bless you, love you, take care